Hi, my name is Emily Sparrow. I'm going to be performing my vital signs skill today. This is my patient. I am wearing school appropriate scrubs, a pewter top, and navy blue pants. I have my stethoscope, my watch, I have my ID badge, and my supplies, which includes blood pressure, stethoscope, and um, something to write on, and an, an alcohol wipe. I'm going to enter the patient's room and proceed with the skill. Knock, knock. Hello. Hello. I close the door behind me to ensure patient privacy. I'm going to set my supplies down on the desk here. Can I have your name and date of birth, please? That is correct. I performed hand hygiene as I looked at his wristband here. All right. My name is Emily. I'm going to be performing your vitals today. First, I'm going to start with my patient's um, heart rate, proceed with his respirations, then um, carry into his blood pressure. When you assess a patient's uh, heart rate or pulse, you want to use your index finger and your middle finger. Come along here on the outside of his arm and locate the radial pulse. Put your arm up here for me. All right. I've located the radial pulse. Can I count? Finish, you can relax. All right, I've got my patient's heart rate. Um, typically, if a patient has a regular heart rate, you count for the full rhythm. My patient has a normal heart rate. So I got 40, I would multiply that times 2 for 80. That is well within the range of 60 to 100 beats per minute. Next, I'm going to move on to my next step. Let me hold your wrist here. All right, I finished with his respirations. Same as the heart rate. If there was any if it was irregular at all, you would count for a full minute. His uh, respirations were normal. I got six, so I um, uh, counted that for 30 seconds. So I'd multiply times two, which would give me 12 respirations per minute. That is within the normal range of 12 to 20 breaths per minute. All right, lean forward for me. I'm going to assess his depth of breath. Okay, you can sit back. All right, his respiration depth was normal. Next, I'm going to proceed into his blood pressure. For blood pressure, you want to locate the brachial artery here on the inside of his arm. Okay, All right. All right, I've located the brachial artery. When putting the blood pressure cuff on, before you do that, there are two arrows on the cuff here. For left arm and right arm, depending on which arm you put it on, we're going to be putting it on his left arm. This arrow here needs to line up over his brachial artery. When applying the cuff, put your arm just like it needs to be at least one inch over the inside of his elbow here, like that. All right, I'm going to move my computer over here so you can visualize it better. All right. All right, before I proceed, I'm going to clean my stethoscope here. 
Put it in the trash can. And do you by any chance know your heart or your excuse me your blood pressure? No. Okay. Um, when a patient does not know their blood pressure, we just start at the average blood pressure of 120 over 80 and go 30 millimeters above that just to ensure that we get the correct reading. All right. Your legs are uncrossed. Remain as still as possible for me. Sorry. All right. All right, let me move my computer back over. All right, my patient's blood pressure was 118 over 60. Um, that is within range. Uh, normal blood pressure starts at 90 over 60 and will go to 120 over 80. All right. Okay, well I'm all finished with um, his vitals. I will gather my supplies, ensure that he has his supplies, and then um, exit the room. Let me give you your call light. Here you go. Keep this with you. Going to hand hygiene. Is there anything else I can get for you before I leave? No, thank you. Okay. So I'm going to, as I leave, I'm going to close the door behind me to ensure patient privacy, and I'm going to go document my vitals.